Hi again, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Ask the Lawyer. I'm Rob Rosenthal with AskTheLawyers.com. Most of us probably have a pretty good idea of what to do if we're involved in an accident involving two vehicles. But what do you do if it's involving a pedestrian? Do you know what to do there? Well, that's the question we're going to ask the lawyer today. And here to answer our questions is attorney Mike Greenspan of the law firm Greenspan and Greenspan in the New York City area. Mike, thank you for making some time for us today. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Let's start with what might be a basic question, but I, I have a feeling a lot of people don't know what it is. Explain to us what it means when you could say it's, you're an at-fault state or a, or a no-fault state. What does that mean and what are the differences? Sure. The whole question is, who's going to be paying your accident-related medical bills? If you're in a no-fault state like New York, and New York is one of the growing minority of states, it means that your accident-related medical expenses up to $50,000, if you have a basic policy or perhaps three times that much if you've got a different policy, will be paid by the insurance carrier for the vehicle which you are in, if you were an occupant or a driver, or if you were a pedestrian that knocked you down. If you're in a, not in a, a no-fault state, then it works quite differently. And, uh, is, and is it different? You mentioned when you're a pedestrian or there's a pedestrian involved. Does it work still the same way in New York State as far as fault or no fault? It does, but it gets more complicated when you're a pedestrian. So the way it works is let's assume that you're in a crosswalk and somebody is too busy texting or eating something or just doing anything but concentrating on, on the main job, which is driving, and they hit you and hurt you. So now we have to say how are those bills going to get paid. Well, the insurance company for the vehicle that struck you is required to pay those accident-related medical bills so long as, and here's the so long as, you have 30 days to notify that vehicle's insurance company that this collision took place, and you have to fill out something called an application for no-fault benefits. Now, the application itself isn't all that difficult, but it can be daunting for someone who's never seen one of these insurance forms, and we all know how much fun it is to fill out an insurance form. So we have to make sure that that gets to the insurance company along with a copy of the police report, because insurance companies in New York have become very aggressive recently in enforcing that 30-day deadline. So it's very important that somebody knows to contact that insurer and do so very quickly. The other thing which has been happening in New York of recent, which is a really big concern, is that there are entities out there that are targeting immigrants. Basically, if you have a name that sounds like you're an immigrant, you are involved in an accident, you're going to suddenly get a phone call, usually on your cell phone, from someone claiming to be from an association dealing with no fault. They will claim that they're going to be there to help you, get you to a doctor, get you to a lawyer, make sure your rights are taken care of. And I've got to urge you, uh, the listeners and the um, viewers of this blog to be very careful if somebody out of the blue contacts you like that because nothing good can come from it. And those people are breaking the law. Well, that was going to be my next question. I thought that was illegal to contact you uh, to, for representation. It is, but the problem is that that doesn't stop people. And it's a shame because it is a problem. And especially when they're attacked, when they are going after people who are most vulnerable. If you're an immigrant and you've been hurt and perhaps English is not your primary language and somebody calls you on your cell offering to give you help, you may think, wow, there's some really nice people out there. They are not. How would they get the cell phone numbers? That's a good question. Sometimes they're getting it from people who are at the towing companies or at the scene who respond, or they have gotten the information in violation of a whole number of laws from the hospital. And some, there are some hospitals whose security and other protocols just are not what they should be. And what if, uh, what if I'm the pedestrian and I'm hit by an, an uninsured driver or an underinsured driver? What are my rights there? What is it? Is it the same as if it's two two vehicles involved? Um, it's similar. So it's very important that a person understands that in New York, you could perhaps have two different insurance companies paying for the same medical bills, or at least medical bills from the same collision. So let's assume that somebody is hit from a car by a driver from Connecticut, and that Connecticut driver causes an incident, an injury in New York. Well. If that insurance company in Connecticut is owned or is itself rights insurance policies in New York, 
even if under that Connecticut policy, there are no no fault or medical payments provided under New York law, they are still obligated to pay for New York uh, benefits for somebody injured in an accident in New York. But remember, I said that that's up to 50,000. If you have self-insured, you've gotten a good insurance agent, you've protected yourself, and you have something called additional personal injury protection or APIP, then you could have your medical bills coming up to $150,000. So you could have the pedestrian, the at-fault vehicle paying the first 50 and your own insurance company paying the rest. Now, in specifically dealing with an underinsured, let's assume that that Connecticut insurance company does not write policies in New York and does not own by an insurance company that does. So now you have a problem as a pedestrian. You have to go through your own insurance. So if you live out in the suburbs, most people have cars. But if you live in Manhattan or in a big city, you may not own a car. You may not own a or live with someone who does. And if that's the case, you have a real problem. You're going to have medical bills and no easy way to pay them absent going to your private health insurance. Oh, yeah, I hadn't really even thought of that. So in that situation, more important than ever to hire an attorney who can help you through that whole process. It sure is because we're here to help and guiding through the whole thicket of dealing with no fault, APIP, OBEL, all these other acronyms you never heard of and probably never want to hear of requires the attention of an attorney who knows how to get you through that minefield. And another thing that's important because we've also seen people targeted in this way, there are some insurance companies, not necessarily with a pedestrian, but somebody who's involved in driving their own car, will hear about the crash and come to their house offering to pay for the damages to their car. But what they're doing is not just doing that, they're having the injured person sign a release. So for 250, maybe $500, and the person is thinking, well, this is just to take care of my car. No, they've just signed away their legal rights. Wow, uh, and so don't sign anything until you talk to your attorney. Absolutely. Now, we've talked uh, about uh, the drivers at fault, the pedestrians hit through no fault of their own. What if the pedestrian is at fault or at least partially at fault? Maybe they're the one texting and not paying attention where they're walking. Does that change everything? How does that change things? Well, it only it doesn't change the fact that the pedestrian is still entitled to no fault benefits from the, the uh, insurer of the vehicle that struck them. So that issue isn't going to get changed. And even if the pedestrian was partly at fault or maybe even majority at fault, it still doesn't matter because motor vehicles required to yield to a pedestrian who's lawfully in a crosswalk or crossing the street. Now, look, we understand sometimes people don't cross at crosswalks. They cross, they, they cross in between instead of at the green. All right. It still means that that per pedestrian gets her medical bills paid. But should they bring a lawsuit against the vehicle that struck them, their percentage of fault is going to be taken into effect, into account. So if it goes all the way to a trial and a jury has to assess fault, that jury could decide that the pedestrian was 50% at fault, 60% at fault or more, and then whatever damages are awarded to them gets reduced by that percentage of fault. So sum up for us, Mike, what is the, if I'm a pedestrian and I'm hit and by a vehicle, what do I do? What, is the, what, what would be your advice for the steps to take after that happens? The first thing you're going to want to do is, of course, get medical attention. Don't delay. Do it immediately. Do not think that it will just go away. If there's something wrong, get the medical attention you need. It's after you get the medical attention that you really want to get on the phone with a lawyer because the lawyers who practice in this area, as I do, we don't charge you to speak to you over the phone. And if you meet with us, we're not going to charge you. All that will happen is we're going to explain to you what your rights are, how you can take care of those rights, how we can help you. And if you decide that you want to hire us, we only get paid if we win. And winning is defined as the insurance company for the vehicle that hurt you is paying you for your pain and suffering that was caused by that crash. If you don't recover anything, you owe us nothing. It occurs to me that in a city like New York City, there's a lot of pedestrians, a lot of people from, uh, uh, I should say, a lot of visitors who might be pedestrians, maybe from another state, maybe from another country. Does that complicate the process if they are? Only for the act of uh, getting communication because it doesn't change their rights to get no-fault benefits under New York law. So if you're coming here from the UK, from another country, or just from across the country, and you're hit by somebody here in New York, you are entitled to get no-fault benefits from the vehicle that hit you. 
And uh, like you said early on, uh, it sounds like even more than ever, time is of the essence if there's that 30-day window. 30 days can go by very quickly. It sure can, especially if somebody is hospitalized and they're just worried about how they're going to get through the next couple of days, let alone filing a claim. That's why it's so important to get in a lawyer who practices in this area, who knows the deadlines, who knows where to contact it. And it comes to this. When you hire an attorney who does this kind of work, you leave the worrying to us. Our clients focus on getting better. We deal with the insurance companies for them. Perfect. Great. Mike, thank you so much for your time today. I think it's a lot of great information. I appreciate it. All right. And I want to thank you for watching today. That's going to do it for this episode of Ask the Lawyer. My guest has been attorney Mike Greenspan of the law firm Greenspan and Greenspan in the New York City area. Please take a second to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button at the bottom of the screen. And if you want the best information about accidents involving pedestrians or you're ready to choose a lawyer that lawyers choose, please visit AskTheLawyers.com. I'm Rob Rosenthal for AskTheLawyers.com.